What's going on guys? Another episode of Off The Menu. We are here in Boston, sunny Boston today to talk with Haley, who owns Haley Henry. We're gonna get her story about her career and see why she has the best wine bar in Boston. Tune in. Good to see you. Here at Haley Henry, been hearing a lot about it, so I was like, I'm gonna hit you up and hopefully you'll have me in and here we are. So thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. We have this, before we get started, this lovely drink here. Do you mind yeah. talking about this a bit? Well, I wanted to pour something for you that kind of makes sense and gets you kind of understanding what we do here and, and why we do it so well. But this is a grape from Georgia. It's indigenous to Georgia. Georgia, the country, is actually the oldest known winemaking country. It goes back 8,000 years. Um, <laughs> and the cool thing about it is this is called, well, the Barra is the producer, but this is like an orange wine. So I don't know if you've heard of all the buzz about orange wine or this or that or the other, but basically it's made the same way that rosé is made. Rosé is made with red grapes. The, you know, they get crushed they take a little bit of the color from the grape and then that's what makes it rosé, but they do it like, you know, really, really fresh. This is kind of done the same way, but it's done with white grapes. So the grape is um, Zitska, which is actually on the bottle. It's one of the oldest grapes of Georgia. And then they go into these like really cool amphora clay pots and they get buried in the ground for like six months on skin contact and that and it comes out this beautiful color that you can see so yeah, people call it orange wine even though it doesn't have anything to do with the citrus yeah. of an orange but um it's basically about the color and the brevity and all that stuff so cheers, cheers it has uh some really fresh notes but it also can taste like bitter orange peels um just different types of stone fruit but really refreshing absolutely let's hit it Oh. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. So what we try to do here at the bar is we really try to get people to think outside the box. Yes. Like, you know, every place in the city has Chardonnay and Cabernet and Pinot Grigio and all the things that people drink all the time. But here we really focus on small production, uh, responsible wine, you know, made from farmers that are farming responsibly in terms of no chemicals, things like that, but we're also bringing in stuff from all over the globe. Nice. Uh, and we're focusing on the great varietals that they have in their country. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to dive more into like your expertise into wine in a moment. However, let's take it back. Yeah. Early days. Talk to us about where you grew up and yeah. what brought you here to Boston. Well, I'm one of five girls. I'm the closest thing my dad got to a boy, I think. <laughs> uh, he lost his hair very early. Um, but I grew up in a really small town in New Hampshire, and it is very much a farming community, which is why my love of farming and, you know, no farms, no food, that's true. Um, why that kind of sticks and resonates still to this day. But I ended up moving down here in 1997. I was working for a photography company, and it just kind of brought me down into the seaport at the time and then well, there was nothing there at all <laughs> there wasn't honestly there was um there was this club called polyesters which was like a multi-floor on the top it was like hip-hop in the middle it was like 80s like it was nice. crazy it was like a crazy club fun. yeah it was fun um but now it's just so built up down there it's like a, a mini vegas so yeah, it's like hard literally. to yeah. hard to understand it building. yeah i know it's crazy um, but then after that, I just kind of bounced around. I was a correction officer for six years in the city, which wasn't, you know, it's kind of one of those jobs. It was probably the most depressing job I ever had, but I actually learned quite a lot about dealing with people and humanity and all that jazz, which was really good because those are things that you can take with you. But then I really got back into the restaurant industry and like hospitality. And I worked at a restaurant down in Fort Point for almost eight years and then I saw the need to kind of create the space that's really focused on what we're doing here. And I opened the bar in 2016. So we're going to be eight. Eight years. When? August 5th. Wow. That's yeah. 
coming up in a couple months. Yeah. I think by the time this drops, it might be around that time. August. <laughs> so, <laughs> It'll be our birthday yeah. present. Yeah. That's really very nice. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Um, so talk about, I mean, wine in and of itself, right? Like it's such a wide expanding kind yeah. of product, right? You know, it's loved by many for many reasons. What is it exactly that you gravitated towards when it comes to wine in a wine bar here in the middle of Boston? Yeah, so, you know, we talk about this a lot, but, you know, there's all this mass-produced wine that's made by machines and not people. And it's made, uh, you know, in certain ways for it to taste the same every year. Yes. But that's just not the way life is. And that's not how our life is or anything else in the ground. So our focus here is really, like I said before, it's on responsibly made wines, but really terroir driven. A perfect example is, you know, all the wild, wildfires that have happened all over the country, everywhere. We have producers that take those grapes and press them into bottle. And what you can taste in the bottle is exactly what happened. It's, it's the best expression of what happened that year in the vineyard. So it's smoky, you know, it's a little bit got that woodsy note to it and things like that. That's the thing that we, we want to talk about truth in the bottle. We don't want to talk about a wine that's made to taste the same every year through chemicals because it's just not it's, it's not accurate it's not really an accurate description of of how versatile wine is um so we start pretty much there and that's why we really focus on small production and indigenous grapes and trying to get people to think about what's in the bottle and in their glass because everyone's you know in the past 10 years you could probably agree with me health is crazy every yep. every app that you see everything on instagram is like your health 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 that, absolutely. yeah and it's all it's usually always about food and things like that but now people are more they're more uh interested and they're really focused more on also what they're drinking like is it healthy for you yes. and so a lot of our natural wine and stuff really is i mean wine is as healthy as you want it to be but in terms of the the aspects of other chemicals it doesn't have any in it so and do you find people who come here are kind of if that think like as well like they kind of really care about what they're really drinking and eating as well yeah because i think most people also think that natural wine or wine that isn't filtered or something like that is always it's got to be like really dirty i mean i don't mean dirty in like a, a dirt way i mean just like kind of has this texture about it that, that is unpleasant, but that's actually not true. Like you could drink a wine and not realize that it's a natural wine because it's still really clean, it's crisp, it's got fruit, it's got you know all the components and characteristics that you would think of any other wine. Absolutely. So it's kind of a, a bridge between, which is kind of nice. That's cool, yeah, for sure. Now I want to talk about Paley Henry itself and mm. the atmosphere, right? Like what makes it Paley Henry? What makes it special and I, I mean we're kind of walking around outside yeah. inside it's a very unique special place you have different things everywhere um it's mostly yeah. yours like what 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 about that makes it so special so when i found this space it was actually a drop ceiling to about where the bottom of the deck is and there was a little tiny hole in the ceiling over there by the door and when i looked up and realized that it went up another probably 12 feet i was like wait a second why is there this drop ceiling here? So we blasted everything out because it's only 686 square feet. Um, so we had to build this mezzanine to kind of put all of our wine and storage and stuff up there. But what makes this bar tick is the energy of the bar. It's not just the wine because the wine is good. It's not just the food that's really good as well. But it's like the energy of the space. Everyone that works here is on the same page. This is like a show. You know, the unique thing about this kitchen is that it's right out in front of you. Like if you're having a bad day, you can't hide anywhere. There's no walk-in for us to go <laughs> go into and it's like right cry there. for a minute, and maybe yeah. into the bathroom, but that's it. So everything that we do is on display for everyone that's out here. And so if we're having a fun conversation and our guests are in on it, they'll high five us or what, I mean, it really is just such a welcoming warm space we have solo diners here we have people in their 80s we have people that just turned 21 like it's it's kind of like the mecca of of just this big melting pot of completely different backgrounds and also different decades of people which i think is really interesting and uh, i mean when i was opening this place it was very it was you know i grew i, I grew up i was born in 77 so 
you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and 90s hip hop and rap was like what I listened to and just like that style. And so when people think of wine bars, they're automatically thinking of do 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 like this crazy like jazz elevator music around, and yeah. jazz and stuff <laughs> like that. And it never was that way here because I never, ever wanted it to be that way. I always say that drinks are just a drink like they shouldn't be up on this pedestal where it's like unaccessible for people and, and we just need to kind of bring it back down to normal. So the whole focus here was to just almost seem like you're just kind of walking into someone's house party. Absolutely. And that's what it feels like pretty much every night. And you definitely see the pieces too, you see the references, you see the run the jewels. Yeah, I mean we don't you know we don't take ourselves too seriously because I think if we did then it would be a fail. Like, you know, life is too short. We we have to be able to have fun with what we're doing and if we get something wrong, we get it wrong and we change it, we'll we'll correct it the next time. But I it's all it's all gravy. Absolutely, for yeah. sure. And when people come in here, what are some of the more popular, you know, wine and food in totality? Yeah. Well, the other reason I poured you this is because people are freaking about orange wines. They have been for a couple years now, but now everyone also wants like a chilled red. Mm. And a chilled red is like a light expression that you serve cold that's, you know, good for the summer, good for the spring, good for kind of all that stuff. Absolutely. So those are a couple other things that are happening. Right. Um, and when people come in here, how do you want them to feel? How do you want them to be embraced? How do you want them to... Well, again, like everyone that works here, I mean, they're just very welcoming. Um, so I feel like when people come in here, it's almost like you can see the big sigh. You know when you have like a day at work and you just need to go somewhere and completely unwind? It's almost like you can physically see it when they sit down because they realize they're listening to the music, they're understanding what's happening they're having a really good interaction with our our staff members like it's just kind of like this big exhale yeah. um and it's great it's almost like they meld into the seats cool. we have so many solo people that come in we have a serial dater that comes in here nice. like multiple times a week but we've had like specifically females when their date has left they'll be like what do you think yeah. do you think i should yeah. I don't know, what did you That's think funny. of him? So it's just kind of one of those atmospheres. I love it. I'm, I'm a big fan of like intimate spaces like yes. this. Where it's like you said, like the music's probably on, it's here, but if you are by yourself, you don't feel like Yeah, no, we have total, we have so many solo diners you know, here, which is fun. That's tight. Yeah. Well, Haley, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. And that was the uh, ultimate episode. Haley, honey, man, check it out. <laughs>